Evolution has long been an accepted theory about how we arrived at the state we are today. The book Survival of the Sickest by Sharon, Dr. Sharon Moalem explains the surprising reasons why diseases such as diabetes, hemochromatosis, and favism have become such common and ingrained parts of our genetic history and why natural selection as we believe it to be hasn't eradicated them. In the first chapter, Dr. Moalem addresses her personal connection to the topic of her book by ex explaining the significance of hemochromatosis, a genetic disease which her grandfather had. Hemochromatosis is a genetic disease which is very common in people of European descent, specifically in children, women, and the elderly. Hemochromatosis causes an overload of iron in the bloodstream and systems of those who have it, who have it by blocking the body's ability to detect and regulate normal iron levels. The excess iron is distributed to different cells in the body except for macrophages, which are the disease-fighting white blood cells. This iron deficiency in the macrophages actually allowed for the people with hemochromatosis to be much more likely to survive the Black Plague because the disease didn't feed off the iron in the macrophages. While nowadays hemochromatosis can be deadly later on in life, during the Dark Ages, those who survived the plague lived on to pass their genetic information to their children, therefore allowing for this genetic disease to, con to continue to exist in millions of people today. This relates to big idea number one, which is, the process of evolution drives the diversity and unity of life. In the case of hemochromatosis, the change in genetic make makeup of the population helps Europeans to survive the plague, which over time results in an evolution. In the second chapter, Moalem addresses one of the most prevalent diseases in the United States, diabetes, and its surprising relationship with temperature. Diabetes is, the most, common, is most common in people of Northern European descent. According to the book, the world experienced the Younger Dryas about 13,000 years ago, a very short but sudden ice age. Much of the population in Europe died out because of this ice age, except for the ones with higher levels of sugar in their bloodstream, aka diabetics. Because of their higher levels of sugar, their blood would freeze at lower temperatures, and their brown fat content allowed them to burn their sugar into heat, making it much more likely for diabetics to survive this ice age. Therefore, while diabetes might have killed people in the long run, it helped them survive this time period and therefore pass on their genetic information. This relates to big idea number three. Living systems store, retrieve, transmit, and respond to information essential to life processes. In this case, the heritable genetic information of diabetes was essential to the continuity of life. In the third chapter, we explore the relationship between sunlight and skin color. The sun provides an essential nutrient for humans, vitamin D. Vitamin D is responsible for the healthy bone structure in humans. The sun's UV rays convert the cholesterol in our bloodstream to vitamin D. As well, additionally, this chapter talks about melanin, the pigment in cells which determines skin color as well as absorbs sunlight. Darker skinned people have more melanin, and therefore their bodies compensate by upping the amount of cholesterol in their systems in order to maximize the amount of vitamin D converted. Moalem also asserts that light-skinned people descended from Africa and just evolved over time to have lighter skin color because of lack of sunlight and in different environments. This relates to big idea number one as well because it demonstrates that organisms are linked by lines of descent from common ancestry. In chapter four, Moalem explores the properties of plants and how they can be both beneficial and harmful to humans. It focuses on favism, a hereditary disease that causes a deadly enzyme deficiency and which affects 400 million people globally. If a person with this, this disease eats fava beans, they can experience a deadly anemia or a lack of iron. The people most affected by favism are those who live by the Mediterranean, which is where fava beans are cultivated. Moalem explains that genetic diseases usually develop to benefit people because of those traits, because those traits are carried on through natural selection. In this case, those with favism are more likely to survive malaria, one of the biggest threats in the region. In chapter five, we focus mostly on the relationship between microbes and parasites with hosts. Humans have trillions of microbes living within them in mutually beneficial relationships. Additionally, this chapter focused on host manipulation, where certain parasites or viruses can influence the actions 
or behavior of the host in order to benefit, benefit the parasite's spread to other hosts. This is called virulence, the severity of the disease, and it is, and it is determined by the ability of a paras virus or parasite to get from one host to another. This chapter relates to big idea number four. Biological systems interact, and these systems and their interactions possess complex properties. In this case, it focuses on the cooperations between humans and microbes, and the competition be between humans and some parasites, which are important aspects of biological systems. In Chapter 6, we learn about the origins of vaccines and the complexities of the human genome. For a long time, scientists believed that since only 3% of our DNA is used to code for protein, the rest of it was junk DNA. However, much of the 97% excess DNA, if you will, is composed of jumping genes, which move around the human genome and are, res and are responsible for certain mutations which occur as a result of environment. Additionally, we learned that almost a third of our DNA is derived from viruses, which have essentially evolved along with us. This also proves the interconnectivity of our systems and how humans continuously interact with the environment, which relates back to big idea number one and number four. In chapter seven, Mo Alem addresses epigenetics, which is the idea that a child will inherit new traits from their parents without changes in their DNA. Epigenetics prove that the gene expression of a child can be defined by the mother, such as her environment and conditions that she is exposed to. Mo Lem connects this to childhood obesity and birth defects as what influences the development of a child isn't necessarily the genetic sequence, but the environment. Finally, in chapter eight, Mo Lem continues on her focus on life, but examines the relationship between life and death. Most people die as a result of telomeres, which, ca which cause aging and shorten the cell's lifespans. For example, cancer cells don't have telomeres, and therefore never die. Moalem discusses the aquatic ape theory of evolution, where our ancestors spent most of their time in the water but later adapted to terrestrial life. She contrasts this by explaining the savanna theory, which explains that bipedalism ad adapted because of the need to hunt and survive on land. In conclusion, Dr. Moalem leads readers through an interesting examination of evolution, looking at natural selection through a new lens and causing them to reevaluate their conception of disease and survival.